Welcome back everybody and we're going to jump right into the do-it-yourself paper clay recipe that I've been using for the last year. This picture you see right here is a picture of a head that I had made last year strictly out of paper clay from a bunch of recipes I had seen and I put my own together. First thing I start out with is just your basic toilet paper. I may get it from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, Walmart, wherever you can get it cheap. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a certain print, anything like that. You just need some good old fashioned toilet paper to be something you can use as the material needed to make paper clay. One of the first things I do is I just take it off its roll. I just roll it in my hand as much as I can. Doesn't matter if it's one, one whole piece or 16 different ones, you just roll off as much as you can, put it into a pot. You're gonna put that pot into the sink or anywhere near a water supply and you're gonna put hot water in it. Hot water is very key because it's gonna break down these fibers and it's gonna uh, get it to get the toilet paper to soak in the water as much as possible. So the hotter the better, just don't burn yourself. Once I get it into the pot, I'm gonna let it soak for about five to seven minutes. After I get done with that, I'm gonna get the good old fashioned kitchen egg beater out and I'm gonna beat this into oblivion, almost into um, a, like a pulp material, but it's wet, so it's not really a pulp yet. And then the next picture you're gonna be able to see, that's about as fine as I can make it with the kitchen aid. So what I do from there is, you can see a lot of water has come out. So what I do is I take it back over to the sink when I get it to this stage and I add more water so that I can have more water get absorbed into the toilet paper after it's broken down. Once I get to this stage, I let it sit for another five to 10 minutes and then I'm gonna put it into a strainer as you can see in this picture right here, coming up next. And yep, we put it in the strainer. And once we get it put in the strainer, believe it or not, none of that toilet paper wants to come out at all, which is really nice, and it firms up really nice in the colander here. And then at that time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them out in little chunks and try to get all the water out as I can. And you can see me here, I'm squeezing as much as I can to get the water out. All the material is broken down, but we gotta get the water out to make it good to go, and that when we add the glue and all the other components, we don't have to worry about the water breaking it down. This is a picture of after I squeeze all the water out and as you can see it's a tight little ball right there with not much water in it and you have to squeeze really hard and if you do more than two rolls of toilet paper your hands will get tired I promise you and you can see in this picture right here in this five gallon bucket is probably about two rolls total two rolls of toilet paper total and this is after they're squeezed so once I get all four rolls in there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it I'm gonna put it on the counter and I'm just gonna start busting it up with my hands. Nothing crazy, I'm just gonna tear it apart, maybe rub it in my hands, try to get it broken down as much as I can because I want this to be into a fine pulp, but I need to get it to this consistency right here before I take it out in the garage and I hook it up to the paddle. And once I get the paddle in there, you can use a metal one or a rubber one, whatever one you prefer. And once you get it in there, you can beat it up and make this into a nice fine pulp. And as you can see on the next picture that's about to come up, the pulp that is in there is the consistency that we want. And that's where we want to go when we start. Um, this is exactly what we want, where we want to be. And I'm about to go live now. Once I go live, I'm going to show you from this point forward on how we do a do-it-yourself paper clay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Halloween Hotel, where I'm going to show you how I make my own clay, my own paper clay. Uh, there's several ways to do it. If you go to YouTube and you just type in paper clay recipes, there's tons of them out there. And they're almost always going to be different. So you could go somewhere and they're using toilet paper. Maybe somebody's using paper towels. Um, there's this uh, insulation stuff you can get at Lowe's. It's actually pretty cheap. It's only about uh, 15 bucks for a bag. It lasts a really long time. You could use that. Uh, some of the parts that go into it. Some people use flour, um, different types of glue. I've seen wood glue. It holds up better outside. You can use Elmer's glue. Uh, you can use caulking. There's so many things out there to make your own paper clay. And what I found out by watching hours and hours of YouTube is that you can come up with your own concoction and more than likely it's going to work out as long as you're using the right type of materials. Uh, I use a new paper clay recipe for the witch's cauldron that I'm currently working on which hopefully I can get the part two to you guys before Sunday and that stuff is as hard as a rock and I feel like it's pretty well waterproof already which I'm sure it's not but I feel like I could put it outside in the rain and as long as I brought it back in it would be okay uh, but I'm gonna waterproof it anyhow even though it's gonna be an inside prop 
So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how I make my paper clay. It might not be like everybody else's. It may be a mixture of seven or eight different people's paper clay that I've seen in the past. But I assure you the paper clay that I'm about to make works pretty well. And a lot of things that I do are complete failures. So to get something that actually works feels good, especially when you know you're just piecing together different ideas from different YouTube channels. So before this video popped off, I put a couple pictures beforehand with me probably talking about the process. And the process is going to get us to this point right here, which you probably can't see too well. But the process that I showed you in these pictures gets us to this point right here. And before we get to that, I want to let you know this is going to be your supply list. The supply list that I use, I go to the Dollar Tree. I got um, three packs of Ultra Soft toilet paper. I got some caulking. And believe it or not, I know it's the little things in life that make a difference, but last year at Dollar Tree, these caulking tubes were only about half full. This year, for this time of year, they're full. Look, it starts right here where my hand's at. So uh, last year they were way up here. So I'm getting almost double the caulking now for just a dollar. You go to Home Depot and try to buy this for a dollar, it's not going to happen. And this stuff works really well. Uh, you could use some wood glue. I don't think I'm going to use any for this. And I got my trusty gallon of Elmer's glue. And then last but not least, uh, well not last but not least, I have some all-purpose flour right here. And then last but not least, I have my Lysol. And I just use a little bit because I am using flour. We don't want any mold. And that's something that I definitely learned by watching other YouTube videos. So you want to make sure you use a little bit of this to prevent mold. Now, when you go through the video, in the beginning, it's going to give you pictures. We're going to get to this pulp, I guess you would want to call it. You get the pulp right here. So this is where we're at. This right here should be enough to finish the cauldron. I had used one full pack prior to that, and this is two packs. So I have, I'm going to have three packs total on this cauldron. But at the end of the day, it's three bucks. It's not a big deal. So I suggest buying everything at the dollar store. The only thing I did not buy was the Elmer's glue. Uh, I bought this at Home Depot for about 13 bucks. So it's really not a bad deal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quickly go over this on how I make it. The consistency is gonna be what you make of it. The last batch I made, the consistency, the consistency was a little dry. But when I put it onto the actual cauldron, I had a cup of water and I was just putting water on top of it and it it worked out pretty well. I was pretty happy with it and it wasn't too sticky. So I definitely thought it was a little dry, but um, I kind of soaked it in a little bit of water. I'll, I'll explain all that when I do the witch's cauldron. I'll show you how I do it if I make this batch the same consistency as I made the first batch. And like I said, paper clay could be so versatile. I literally didn't have flour on my first batch. I went to the pantry and I took two boxes of uh, cornmeal. Um, yeah, I use cornmeal. I just got the Jiffy cornmeal and I threw it in a bucket. Worked out pretty well. So I didn't even need the flour. And I'm going to show you the cauldron here in a little bit and you'll see it's absolutely rock hard. It's only been drying for less than 48 hours. And uh, it's wonderful stuff. I should just get that instead of flour, but I'm not. But improv you can improvise on everything. You absolutely can. And one thing that I will say is I have used a lot of different techniques. One of the techniques that I did utilize that a lot of people utilize that I really don't like is that insulation that you can buy. It's like RS-13, something like that. I didn't really like that stuff too much. It has a lot of plastic pieces in it. Uh, for insulating your home, it's fine. Uh, but for doing projects with paper clay, it's very time consuming to pick it all out. And I just, I just really didn't like it. I would just rather buy toilet paper. It's so much easier with toilet paper. And uh, that, that insulation stuff, it did make some good stuff. I made my first, uh, I made my first sculptures, uh, head sculptures last year. Maybe I can throw a picture on here at some point during this time just to show you how I did my first sculptures last year. They came out really good with this stuff, so the insulation works. I'm just not a patient man. So I don't feel like picking through plastic. I'd rather just put some TP in a bucket, do what I gotta do, and make some stuff. That's, that's my goal. So. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you real quick on how I make this. This is going to be really quick. And um, stay with me here. And I'll try not to go too fast. Sometimes I, I speak really fast and I got to slow down. So we got the pulp. All right. I got the pulp in here. Here it is. I got the pulp. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my two, my two tubes of caulking. I'm going to do that first. I got my caulking gun right here. I've already got the tip cut off. So 
so I'm just gonna squeeze it in here, nothing crazy. Just get it all in there. We'll get the second one in. Now because this batch is double the size of the last batch, there's a good possibility that I may have to add a little bit more caulking. But, like I said, paper clay is versatile. So, if I don't have any more caulking, which I don't think I do, I can either add wood glue, I can add more Elmer's glue than I typically use. Um, I'm going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out together. But I guarantee you, as long as I don't use something ridiculous like water, it's going to work out. So before I add the glue, I'm going to go ahead and just put in my Lysol now because I'm going to forget. So I'm only doing this because I know I'm going to remember. So that's all mad. It's all mad. Now people might come up and say, you added too much. You didn't add enough. Guess what? Don't care. Uh, this works for me. So uh, now Elmer's glue. With the Elmer's glue in here. Again, I'm just completely judging on how much I need. I'm probably doing uh, I maybe put a cup and a half in there. I may need a little more. And, and the reason for the flour is it is a binding agent. It's going to bind a little bit better. So I do want it to be a little uh, moist, I guess, so I can add a little bit of flour. But I definitely want to add some flour because it's a good binding agent for it. So it's about to get loud right here. I'll probably fast forward, but I'm gonna mix everything up as good. I'm gonna add just a touch more glue. Probably added about another three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna put this on the floor to get it done a little faster. I'll be back. So you probably can't see that well. These lights are really bright, and I got them on uh, maybe 35% of the way up. Um, but it's probably the consistency of a really wet dough. Like if you were making bread dough or something, it's a consistency of a really wet dough, and that's what that caulking is going to do. The caulking is going to make it, it absorbs, it can absorb so much. And um, I didn't say this in the beginning. I'll tell you why I'm opening up this flower. Uh, I took those pictures last night of the toilet paper being shredded and all that and how we squeeze it into a ball, take all the water out and then we put it in the bucket and we kind of blend it all together. I did that last night and then I let it sit overnight. I live in Florida, smoking hot here and they got pretty dry overnight. So I think the drier the toilet paper is, maybe a better uh, binding it's gonna give you too, which I didn't do that on the first one and like I said, it's really hard. So this being dry toilet paper might work out a little better. So as far as flour goes, I'm just gonna guesstimate. Probably a cup and a half, who knows. Um, if it's too dry, I'll add a little bit more glue. I got a little bit left, so I'll make it work. So I'm gonna put it back down the floor. I'm gonna mix this in, we're gonna see the consistency and I'll be right. Okay, again, probably not going to be able to see it very well. It is now looking like pizza dough. Looks like pizza dough now. And when you're putting the when you're putting the beater in there, whatever one you choose to uh, choose, this is an all metal one. I have a rubber one. Um, and you've seen I was using like a kitchen one to break up the toilet paper, which worked really well. 
Um, but these are pretty cheap. You can get them at Home Depot. It's not a big deal. Um, the rubber paddle one might work a little better, but I just I have it outside in a bucket right now because it had monster mud all over it. Um, but when you're using this and you go up against the sides and it starts pulling off the sides, that means it's getting dry, and that's probably the consistency you want. The best way to explain it would be that when you put it in your hands, you don't really want anything sticky on your hands, just like any kind of dough that you would make if you baked before or anything like that. So you want to make sure that um, when you pick it up, you don't get sticky. The batch I made last time, it did leave my hands a little sticky, but I put a little water on it and it came right off. So I'm going to knead this a little bit and I'm going to see if I can pull a piece off if I get it to the consistency I want. And if I don't, I'll show you where it's at and then we'll add more, take something away. We'll figure it out. So just putting my hand in here, I can tell you it needs more flour. So. I added about another cup and a half, two cups. I'll be back. so happy right now I'm so glad that I recorded this video because I'm pretty sure this stuff came out pretty good and you can see I totally half-assed it and it's coming out pretty good so here we go so again I apologize for the light I wish I wish I turned down here a little bit and see whoa wrong way maybe this will work a little better a little less glare as you can see right there that's what we got. It's sticking to my hands a little bit, but it's very workable. I kind of like it. Um, I like it a lot. I really, I really truly think the cock is what makes it. And I don't really know this stuff for the exception of two things. Trial and error for myself, and I ask a lot of questions. Um, a big thing about Halloween is if you want your props to last a long time, um, you have to figure out what you're gonna do with them. So, for instance, I learned a couple weeks ago from a fellow haunter that's amazing um, that there's a concoction you can use for your facades that are gonna let them last forever. I completely entrust in what he told me. I made this concoction, which I'll probably make um, as I go through building my facades as tutorials. Um, I'm gonna show you this trick that this gentleman showed me. It's absolutely not my idea because I'm not that smart. So. I'm going to show you this trick that this gentleman showed me, and flexibility is everything. When you're talking about facades, stuff's going to be flexing, so you want to put um, some stuff in there that's going to allow it to flex, like glue and paint and things of that nature. I kind of feel like with paper uh, clay, I kind of feel it's the same way. You want to give it a little bit of give. So I think this caulk is what really makes this stuff work really well. And yeah, you're going to add water to it, and water's going to, what you may think, going to break it down. But after that water dries out, it's good. As long as you're not using a crap ton of water, you're good to go. So... I'm very, very happy with this outcome. I really wish I could get a better angle of how that stuff is, but I can show you. See how it's like not on the sides? It just looks like pizza dough, so I mean, you're not missing much. But this stuff right here is ready to go, which means that probably tomorrow I'm gonna cover this up. I'll probably put a, just something on top. I'll just put the plastic lid back on top. I'm not gonna get crazy, I'm gonna make this simple. I'm gonna put the plastic lid back on top. I may add a little bit of water, um, and then tomorrow, I think I'll be able to finish up that cauldron. But let me get that cauldron real quick. I'll be back. All right, so I know it's ugly right now, but this is the witch's cauldron that I had. I'm probably giving away a couple secrets because my last video, oh, hold on, let me show you how hard it is. This stuff's pretty hard. There's a little bit of soft right there, right? That's pretty solid. Uh, but in my, my part one of my witch's cauldron, I had talked about uh, just basically using paper mache. I went to bed that night and I figured out paper mache is definitely not going to work. So I have to absolutely use something that's going to give it a solid foundation and it can make it more round. So I'm going to put the rest of this paper clay on tomorrow um, and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to give it one final coat to round everything out and then I'm going to make that lip bigger. I'll probably put another pool noodle or something on top. So really hoping this cauldron works out because... It's been a pain in my butt and it's a lot of work. So 
if you have any questions, just put it down below. And um, like I said, paper clay, very versatile tool, can get you very creative um, and let you do a lot of things that, that uh, you normally don't think you can do. So if you heard some squawking going on, some weird noises, this is probably why. Come here, girl. This is Jasmine, our parrot, and I bring her out in the garage with me because she just, she loves people. And she, I didn't think she was going to be trying to talk during the video, so if you heard some noises, that was her. She'll be in a lot of my videos. She likes being out here in the garage. Uh, can you say hi? Nope, she can't say hi yet. But um, maybe she'll start talking in the videos because she talks all the time when I'm not looking. She didn't say anything. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a very basic video. Remember, this is just my concoction. Everybody is a little different. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe. There's going to be a crap ton of videos coming up. This Halloween is going to be crazy here at our household. We cannot wait. It's going to be a great Halloween. we got everybody pumped up in the house. At least I think they're pumped up, but I know I am. And stay tuned for the next video because we're going to do some unboxing on some stuff that I got off of Amazon and eBay and stuff. Stuff I've been collecting uh, all off season I guess you would want to call it but we got a lot of stuff that uh, I'm gonna show you that's gonna be my next video I'm gonna try to tape that tonight and um, hope you guys stay tuned we'll talk to you later